from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Vijay Amartaraj. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from three donors. The first is an anonymous donor from DeBolt, Alberta, in memory of Henry Moorman for the health of his children and grandchildren and for peace within the family. The second is Patricia Gagne from Ottawa, Ontario, in loving memory of her husband, Yed, on the 16th anniversary of his death and her cousin, Father Leonard St. John, who passed away on August 20th, 2022, in thanksgiving for the daily TV Mass, and for all those who make the daily TV Mass possible for our viewers. The third is Wilma Rodriguez from Milton, Ontario, in loving memory of Tony Buda Rodriguez, on his second death anniversary today, and for the deceased members of the Rodericks and Cordero families, for the intentions of her children and grandchildren, and for world peace. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Sisters and brothers, as we gather with faith in our risen Lord, we take a moment to pray for God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Enable us, we pray, Almighty God, to proclaim the power of the risen Lord, that we who have received the pledge of his gift may come to possess all he gives when it is fully revealed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to There is a story of an anthropologist who had been studying the habits and culture of a remote African tribe. One day he put together a gift basket filled with candies and wrapped it in a ribbon. And he placed the basket under a tree and he then gathered up the children in the village. The man drew a line in the dirt, looked at the children, and said, When I tell you to start, run to the tree, and whoever gets there first will win the basket of candies. And when he told them to run, they all took each other's hands and ran together to the tree. Then they sat together around the basket and they enjoyed their treat as a group. The anthropologist was shocked. He asked why they would all go together when one of them could have one all the candies for themselves. 
a young girl looked up at him and said, how can one of us be happy if all the other ones are sad? Sisters and brothers, this incident is a beautiful illustration of what we read in our first reading today. The passage from the first part of the Acts of the Apostles beautifully describes for us the life and the animation of the earthly and the early community, the church. But then they also make us wonder or simply make us say, is such a life ever possible? Let's look at today's passage, for example. It reads, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart, one soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything was held in common. And again, there was not a needy person among them. It was distributed to each as any had need. Now, though it may sound like a perfect and ideal community, a community that had many, many merits, the coming chapters of the Acts of the Apostles will make it clear to us that in spite of all the blessings, this community, the early church community, had its own share of challenges or misunderstandings, conflicts, confusions, divisions, and so on, like any other human community. But the wonderful thing is that this particular community was able to overcome those challenges and difficulties with the help of the risen Lord and with the help of the Spirit of God. Otherwise, there is no way that the church would have survived and spread far and wide to reach our own time and to reach our own communities. Sisters and brothers, in our current secular society of selfishness and indifference, these descriptions might seem like a pie in the sky. But these accounts are very true, and the Church presents them to us every year to encourage and to invite each of us and our communities to imitate the example of the early church community. A little while ago, I came across this beautiful concept called Ubuntu, a Guni word which has its roots in humanist African philosophy, where the idea of community is one of the building blocks of the society. Ubuntu is a way of acting and living that prioritizes the well-being of a group above an individual. It emphasizes on oneness. It depends on human dependence so that no one is left behind. I am what I am because we all are. Such was the kind of life that was lived and affirmed by the members of the early church community. That is the kind of life that we are called to live out and affirm in our own Christian living today. However, we know very well that we are far away from such a reality. Almost, it seems that we are traveling away from it rather than towards it. Today, we find ourselves in a world that tries to divide rather than unite people, a world that tries to destroy rather than build up people, a world that encourages 
taking from people, from others, rather than giving or sharing with others. But the model of the early church community beckons each of us to work, to build a community of unity, of sharing, and of caring. To do that, we need to heed to the words of our Lord in today's gospel. We must be born again in our attitudes and behaviors. And so we pray for that special grace and for that special gift at this Mass. Amen. And we offer our prayers to our gracious God with faith. For all those in the daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, that their faith in the risen Christ and in his healing presence among us might be strengthened, we pray to the Lord. Glory to you, Lord. In thanksgiving for our Easter faith and in the hope that our children and our children's children might be blessed with the same Easter faith, we pray to the Lord. Glory to you, Lord. For the newly baptized and for those who have been received and confirmed into our communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Loving God, hear us and hear our prayers and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual food. Bless you, Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise and sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope, and with Francis, our bishop, and all the clergy and the people you have gathered. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that he should enter in my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.